can see that the 5090 is an engineering marvel. Apple inspired AMD, but they did it. And we got more 9070 XT benchmarks. Maybe IGN wasn't that far off. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Friday, January 10th, 2025. As a reminder, we do have that PC giveaway that's gonna be happening in two weeks. We're gonna be drawing the winner. It's a Corsair pre-built with an i9-14900KF and an RTX 4090, not a 5090, I'm sorry, but we're giving it away before the 5090 even comes out. If you wanna enter, you can check us out over on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash UFD tech. Would love to have you over there. And while you can disassemble that Corsair pre-built PC and see what's on the inside, people have been doing that with the RTX 5090, essentially being on full showcase over at CES. And there's a little bit of a teardown that went on where they got to see the PCB as well as the cooler to just kind of see everything that's going on. And it is incredible the amount of engineering that went into this cooler. And just a firm picture that's now official of this super dense, tiny PCB that we kind of saw, already saw this in a pre-release image about about two weeks ago with the 5090 being demonstrated. You got the 32 gigabytes of VRAM, you got the mounting holes here, you got all the VRMs that are powering that 575 watts of that massive monolithic chip. And one of the things to think about is that if you look at the card and according to AMD's own definitions, the PCB is right in the middle here, whereas the connecting points are over to the side. So how did they do that? Well. They do it with breakout boards and pogo pins. There's multiple sections on this board that appear to connect to different subboards, and a lot of that appears to be for the fact that it needs to connect to your display ports and your uh, HDMIs. However, it's not quite clear if the pogo pins are actually going to be on the release sample or if this is part of an engineering sample because the date of the PCB that's featured in this picture is uh, mid-September, so they might have revised it a little bit, but it's just amazing to see this little bit of engineering that's going into the RTX 5090. I just, I think it's wild what's happening with that. But, but what's also wild is that the RTX 5090 might not be the highest end gaming card or uh, technically uh, consumer card that Nvidia is planning on releasing this generation because there's reports that an RTX Titan is in the works for Blackwell and especially considering that there's room for growth in terms of the amount of CUDA cores that could be added as well as the amount of tops that could be potentially added based on the die that the 5090 is based on, it looks like we could get a 20% faster GPU just based on raw specs alone, not accounting for anything like clock speed or otherwise. Obviously, that would likely mean uh, more power draw, you know, over 600 watts, potentially two 16-pin power connectors. But in case you're thinking, uh, well, is this even possible to happen? This is being reported as of July by Kopai Kimi, who says the big thing exists with regards to the new Titan. And if, in case you're wondering, uh, why does it matter what this this guy says, well, it turns out back in May, they reported that the Founders Edition for the 5090 was a two slot cooler. I saw this rumor. I thought it was crazy. Look at us now here in January, 2025, over six months after this, and it turns out they were spot on. So whether or not the Titan actually ends up coming out, there were reports obviously of the Titan for the RTX 40 series, never quite made it. I think Gamers Nexus just did the teardown on the card that should have been the RTX 40 series Titan. So no clue if it'll actually make it, but it's in development. Nvidia appears to be working on it. And uh, shout out to Kofi Kimi for uh, proving us all wrong and that they are actually on the industry inside because man, two slot founders edition 5090, never thought I would see the day. But honestly, while the two slot founders edition is cool, uh, Cooler Master coming out with another GPU cooling design that I think is just as impressive. They showed this off over at CES. You can see it's a big funky cooler or is it? Because it's actually an adjustable height cooler. It can go down to three slots if you use slim profile fans or it could go up to four or larger slots if you use regular size thickness fans. And it doesn't even have to be Cooler Master fans. You could swap it out for other fans, potentially even Noctua fans. That hasn't been confirmed, but it is confirmed that it doesn't have to be Cooler Master uh, in terms of the fans that are being placed in there. So you can see on the left, they have the slim fans installed. On the right, they have the non-slim fans installed, the thicker ones. The only problem here, the only difficulty is that 
Cooler Master is not selling these. They're not actually gonna release these to the wild. Allegedly, they only plan to release them as part of their pre-built. So you can get these cards, but it's only gonna be in a full Cooler Master system. I personally think Cooler Master should sell this. I mean, you, you're more than welcome to uh, agree or disagree with me down below in the comments, but I think if we can maybe get some market uh, excitement for these Cooler Master cards, maybe we'd see them come out with it. I think they should get into this. I want this. Even if they don't sell the card, you know, maybe there's difficulties with them becoming an uh, NVIDIA partner to sell them. I would love it if they sold the cooler as a secondary thing. That would be fantastic. Allowing people to have a DIY setup for uh, treating their card a little bit better. Come on, Cooler Master, please. But while there's super cool 5090s being announced, we're getting to see them. There's also details coming out about the RTX 5090 laptop and some laptops that are gonna be shoving a 9955 HX3D in there to come up to 280 watts of power, essentially making the fastest gaming laptop known to man. So, so far, there are two gaming laptops that have been announced that are gonna have this spec class and they are both based in China. Both MechRevo and another brand announcing that they're planning on doing this setup, potentially drawing a ton of power 24 gigabyte RTX 5090. Based on AMD's own release dates, they're not likely to hit the market until later this year, even if the 5090 is gonna come out sometime soon, but it's likely that this will be restricted to the Chinese market just yet. Who knows if an American laptop manufacturer will come out with a spec sheet. They haven't announced it just yet, but I would like to know. And I'm gonna need to save up a lot of money if I want to afford that, so hopefully Reese can do that with the tech deals today. Yo, welcome back to UFT Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals out on the internet. I hope you guys are doing well. Hope you guys enjoying your Friday and I hope you guys enjoy these deals because starting us off today, we have the Team Group T-Create Expert DDR5 RAM kit featuring 32 gigs running at 6,000 megahertz at CL30 for only $87.99, making it $19 off. But then next up, we have the Corsair K70 Pro Mini with a 60% wireless hot swappable mechanical keyboard going for only $89.99, making it $90 or 50% off. And then lastly today, we have this AOC 27 inch 1440p 180 hertz mini LED gaming monitor, which you can pick up for only $240. $49.99 making it $30 off. And hey, with that, the deals are done. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below. But until next time, I'm gonna hand you off back to Brett for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Well, Reese, it turns out people are getting a worse deal when it comes to Steam because Valve discontinued Steam coupons officially as of yesterday. If you're asking what a Steam coupon is, so was I when I heard about this. Never heard of them before, and that's probably one of the reasons why they're being discontinued. It's not the first thing that Steam has done. They actually stopped giving them out a while back, but now they've actually removed it from partner documentation. Allegedly, these coupons were given out as like sale coupons coupons through crafting badges or random developer gifts, which like I had no idea that these were even around and it looks like they're not around at all anymore. So I, this is the last time I'm likely to think of them. But AMD was thinking of Apple when they decided to move forward with their Strix Halo APU. In an interview, somebody asked, you know, what's going on with uh, these Strix Halo APUs? Did Apple with its Apple Silicon inspire you to do it? According to AMD, they said that we were building APUs while Apple was using discrete GPUs. They were using our discrete GPUs. So I don't credit Apple with coming up with the idea. Essentially, Strix Halo is just a continuation of the APU that AMD has been making for a very long time. I mean, they, they were even making it back in the, the bulldozer days before Ryzen ever came out. So I, I believe them on that, especially because Apple Silicon on the desktop market was not around when AMD was making APUs. I, I agree that, but that's not where they stopped. They actually do give Apple some kudos saying many people in the PC industry say, well, if you want graphics, it's gotta be discrete graphics because other Otherwise, people will think it's bad graphics. And that once Apple Silicon came out, this engineer at AMD was able to get approval to spend money to developing this Strix Halo because it was proven that you could go integrated graphics and then still sell a massive volume and that you could give it higher performance at the same power. This is a drum I've been beating as well externally as a content creator trying to just always show love to the APUs every single generation that they've been released. I've been hyping up Strix Halo since it was rumored. I'm glad to see that it's here now and I'm glad to see that, you know, it is uh, just an industry trend that this is happening. And obviously like we've had this forever on consoles, they're using APUs, bringing that to the PC market and allowing PC gamers to get a slice of that pie. I'm excited for it. It's not just Mac OS and console people anymore. And it looks like FSR might not be as bad anymore as it once was. Hardware Unbox getting to test out FSR 4 versus FSR 3.1 at CES. And it actually looks pretty good. It looks Looks like it's delivering better visual qual 
quality, less artifacts, less ghosting and shimmering. The side-by-sides, as you can see here in that like green little tube, you can see that there's a lot more detail on FSR 4 here versus FSR 3.1, which is this first picture. Additionally, things like the details of these rings and the shimmering particle effects, this is FSR 3.1, switching over, it's FSR 4, much more detailed, less uh, artifacting. And then even here in the details of the stand, you can see that there's people there in FSR 3.1, but they're kind of blotchy and not clearly defined. In FSR 4, they're much cl more clearly defined, much more densely populated, and it looks like it's just going to be a more effective tool overall. It's good to see that FSR 4 is happening. According to that one leaked marketing slide from AMD, it's going to be exclusive to the 9070 series, so this is not going to be something that you can use on your current gen AMD cards. Allegedly, it's kind of the same thing that's going on with NVIDIA's DLSS 4, except for NVIDIA did backport some DLSS 4 features to the previous generation of cards, so it's not quite one for one. But overall, you might have to get a new GPU to take advantage of that. But according to new benchmarks, those new GPUs might not be as slow as the initial benchmarks made it seem. So in yesterday's episode of Hot News, we talked about how IGN got their hands on an RX 9070. They benchmarked it in Black Ops 6. However, there's quite a few issues with their benchmarks. We don't know if they actually restarted the system, applied the settings, and if it's a one-for-one -one comparison. But there's new 9070 XT benchmarks that have dropped that it might slightly vindicate uh, the benchmarks that IGN came out with. So this is the card that's a step above what IGN tested. But before we get to that, there are new details coming out with regards to the 9070 XT, including that it could be 330 watt TDP. Additionally, it's only gonna have 16 gigabytes of memory and it's only gonna be GDDR6 at 20 megabits per second. And depending on the price that comes in at, that's either enough for you or the speed of that memory is a little bit slow. It's coming in at 644 gigabytes per second of total memory bandwidth on its 256-bit bus, which as you can see here, the 5070 is supposed to have 672 gigabytes per second. So the 9070 XT's memory total bandwidth is going to be slower than the RTX 5070s. But there are two new benchmarks given for the 9070 XT, both in Speedway, which is 3D Mark's ray tracing benchmark, and Time Spy Extreme, which is 3D Mark's 4K benchmark. And in those, the 9070 XT does not show up well when it comes to ray tracing. It underperforms compared to the 7900 XTX. It beats out the 4070 Ti, but it loses to the 4070 Ti Super. In Time Spy Extreme, however, it puts up better numbers, beating out the RTX 4080 Super, but still coming a little bit shy of the 7900 XTX. So in one benchmark, it's better than the 4080 Super, and in another benchmark, it is definitely worse than the 4080 Super. So very likely that IGN benchmark of the 9070 non-XT beating the 4080 Super, beating the 7900 XTX wasn't totally relevant, but it's not 50% off, right? Like it looks like it might be more like 25, 30% off. And that 9070 non-XT might be closer to the 4070 Ti region when it comes to just traditional rasterized graphics. Obviously these are just a couple benchmarks. We still need to learn a little bit more. AMD still not really saying much as of right now. I'm glad they're giving FSR four demos. Hardware and box getting to take a look at that. I wanna know more, I wanna know more. AMD, please give us more details. And you guys gave me more comments in yesterday's episode of Hot News, so let's go check them out. Royal Mud Crab saying, Radeon rumors this season have been a pendulum. My neck hurts. I agree. It's been it's been a wild ride. It's bad, it's good, who knows? That's why I always try to present what's out there and uh, just kind of discuss it rather than saying prescriptive. I usually don't come in with my own rumors saying, hey, this is what I know it's gonna be like because more often than not, it's just, it's never quite clear until we get to the end, unless you're Copite Kimmy and you know that the 5090 Founders Edition is two slots, holy crap. Coalition Gaming though saying, personally, I think anyone buying a 5090 Founders Edition should get a free leather jacket. That'd be cool, that'd be cool. You know, what I could see NVIDIA doing is including like a little uh, figurine of Jensen in his uh, lizard skin jacket, like a little, it's like a GPU support bracket, but it's Jensen holding up your GPU, just like he's holding up the entire US economy right now. And then Ollie underscore saying, I'm sure all the people that buy the 5090 and the $6,000 pre-builds just to browse the web on the internet will buy the 9950X 3D with the dual 3D cache, no matter the price. I think you're right, but I do also think that, um, you know, while AMD says it's a economic issue or a financial issue to not include the 3 v cache, more than likely it would be a marketing issue, right? Like let's say the 9950X3D comes in at 799 and then for them to uh, double the v cache, it's actually 
$8.99 or even potentially like $9.49, $9.99, you're spending that extra amount of money and then the benchmarks are gonna come out and showing that it's basically no difference in gaming performance when you actually set them up the exact same. So it'd actually be a presentation issue and a marketing issue, even if uh, quality of life would be better for the users who have the dual 3D V cache. It'd be much harder to communicate that in a review where that like actually matters to people. Think of objective reviews or like stringent lab grown data, they'll be like, well, when you do things properly, the numbers are exactly the same. When in reality, like the like what we saw with the ARC B580, when you use it like a regular person uses it, things are different. The lab environment's different than the real world environment. And that's a number that's hard to quantify. So they would run into a marketing problem and probably get crapped on for it. And then we had a lot of people uh, calling me out yesterday for the 9070 XT benchmark that IGN posted. Uh, we got Stormkiller saying it might be wrong. We got Jonathan Cavalier saying the benchmark was likely flawed. There's tons of people who reiterated the very thing that I said in the video. So I, I addressed that. I talked about it. I made sure that everybody knew. I did say it. I didn't I didn't leave it out. I didn't make it seem like IGN did the right thing. I talked about the problems with it. But then we got D. Peter saying thermal takes should do green interior cases, then offer a choice of blue, red, purple, and orange for exteriors, ninja turtle cases. That would be fantastic. Or they could potentially do like um you know, that they do like the side panels would just be the, the colors of the, the headbands for the Ninja Turtles. That could be cool. Like there could be multiple variations that they could do with it. And I love that idea. And then Purple Hay says, Thermaltake needs to make a cyan white pink case like the UFD colors. Thermaltake, you want to do a collab? Uh, Thermaltake Tower 600 UFD edition? Tower 300 UFD edition, Tower 250 UFD edition. We're in, we're in, let's make it happen. And then we got Barusu coming in saying, Bald Alinus. What the heck, man? Come on. I'll see you back here on Tuesday for more Dada's Tech News.